O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Psalm 93 The Lord is King, and hath put on glorious apparel. The Lord hath put on his apparel, and girded himself with strength. He hath made the round world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, thy high seat has prepared. Thou art from everlasting. The floods are risen, O Lords. The floods have lift up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The waves of the sea are mighty and rage horribly, but yet the Lord who dwelleth on high is mightier. Thy testimonies, O Lord, are very sure. Holiness becometh thy house forever. The first lesson is taken from the 22nd chapter of the Book of Numbers, starting at the first verse. The Israelites set out and camped in the plains of Moab, across the Jordan from Jericho. Now Balak, son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Moab was in great dread of the people because they were so numerous. Moab was overcome with fear of the people of Israel, and Moab said to the elders of Midian, This horde will now lick up all that is around us, as an ox licks up the grass of the field. Now Balak, son of Zippor, was king of Moab at that time, and he sent messengers to Balaam, son of Beor, at Pethor, which is on the Euphrates, in the land of Emer, to summon him, saying, A people has come out of Egypt, they have spread over the face of the earth, and they have settled next to me. Come now, curse this people for me, since they are stronger than I. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them from the land, for I know that whomever you bless is blessed, and whoever you curse is cursed. So the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the feast for divination in their hand, and they came to Balaam, and gave Balak's message. He said to them, Stay here tonight, and I will bring back word to you, just as the Lord speaks to me. So the officials of Moab stayed with Balaam. God
God came to Balaam and said, Who are these men with you? And Balaam said to God, King Balak, son of Zippor of Moab, has sent me this message. A people has come out of Egypt and has spread over the face of the earth. Now come, curse them for me. Perhaps I shall be able to fight against them and drive them out. God said to Balaam, You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. So Balaam rose in the morning and said to the officials of Balak, Go to your own land, for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So the officials of Moab rose and went to Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Once again, Balak sent officials more numerous and more distinguished than these. They came to Balaam and said, Thus says Balak, son of Zippor, Do not let anything hinder you from coming to me, for I will surely do you great honour, and whatever you say to me I will do. Come, curse this people for me. But Balaam replied to the servants of Balak, Although Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the command of the Lord my God to do less or more. You remain here, as the others did, so that I may learn what more the Lord may say to me. That night, God came with Balaam and said to him, If the men have come to summon you, get up and go with them, but do only what I tell you to do. So Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the officials of Moab. God's anger was kindled because he was going, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the road as his adversary. Now the donkey he was riding on, and his two servants were with him, and the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. So the donkey turned off the road and went into the field, and Balaam struck the donkey to turn it back onto the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with a wall on either side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it scraped against the wall and scraped Balaam's foot against the wall, so he struck it again. Then the angel of the Lord went ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he struck the donkey with his staff. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and it spoke to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have made a fool of me, I wish I had my sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. But the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey? which you have ridden all your life to this day, have I been in the habit of treating you this way? And he said, No. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his drawn sword in his hand, and he bowed down, falling on his face. The angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? I have come out as an adversary, because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these th three times. If it had not turned away from me, surely just now I would have killed you and let it live. Then Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know that you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now therefore, if it is pleasing to you, I will return home. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with these men, but speak only what I tell you to speak. So Balaam went on with the officials of Balak. Here endeth the first lesson. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry out, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. 
the glorious company of the apostles, praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets, praise thee. The noble army of martyrs, praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thy honourable, true and only son. Also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the King of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge, and we pray thee therefore, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine heritage. Govern them, and lift them up for ever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever wild without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted, never let me be confounded. The second lesson is taken from the seventh chapter of the Gospel according to Luke, starting at verse 36. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And a woman in the city who was a sinner, having learnt that he was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus spoke up and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he replied, speak. A certain creditor had two debtors. One owned 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he cancelled the debts for both of them. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he cancelled the greater debt. And Jesus said to him, You have judged rightly. Then, turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven, loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say amongst themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Here endeth the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited his people and redeemed his people. He has raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant to perform the oath which he spake to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. 
and thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, the King of glory, who hast exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, Leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us, and exalt us unto the same place whither our Saviour Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that we can bring our prayers to you, confident that you hear us. We pray for the church around the world. Thank you for the religious freedom we have. Please encourage and strengthen those who are persecuted for their faith. Grant our church leaders wisdom, particularly in how the church may be engaged in loving and serving society at a time when it is really needed and difficult to communicate when churches are physically closed. Help the church to demonstrate 
that it is alive and willing to serve, although its doors are closed. Please help Bishop Graham. Give him wisdom and insight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for our benefits of Colgate and Toomland and for this online community. And thank you that technology enables us to meet together in this way to worship you. Thank you for Alaric and his ministry. Please continue to ignite him with passion to deploy his skills and commitment in serving you and us. Thank you for every member of this community and for every person who has popped in and out of these services. May we all feel that we have met with you through being together. We pray for the folks in the wider parish. May they see your love radiate from us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our diocesan prayer calendar, we pray today for Porringland, consisting of Framing Le Merle, Howe and Porringland, and their clergy, Robert Parsonage and Rachel Foster. In the Anglican Worldwide Prayer Calendar, we pray for Nazir in South Sudan and their Bishop Simon Luel Banyal, for Agra in North India and their Bishop Prem Prakash Rabir, and the Episcopal Church Diocese of Indianapolis and their Bishop Jennifer Baskerville-Bowl. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our government, which is struggling, struggling with serious decisions and struggling to maintain integrity. We pray that you would challenge leaders to honourable and honest leadership and personal lives and so provide society with the impetus to remain united in tackling the virus during lockdown and the easing out of lockdown. Thank you, Father, for all the key workers going out to work to care for the sick and dying, and also those who enable society to continue functioning. We are truly indebted to every person, and we thank you that people are recognising the worth and value of everyone's contribution in society. May these seeds of new respect remain and continue to grow and develop into a new and better society for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your hope and healing for all who are suffering or sick. For all who are sick with coronavirus in hospital or at home. For those with existing illnesses whose operations and treatments have been postponed. For those suffering with depression or anxiety or other forms of mental illness. For those with addictions. For those living alone or in unhappy or cramped homes. For those facing abuse and violence. For those who are isolating and isolated. For those who are feeling lost and alone. Father, our hearts ache when we think of the suffering of our brothers and sisters here and around the world, and we know that your heart aches more. In the silence, we bring before you those that we know are in need of your comfort, sustenance, peace and hope now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Bless all who mourn and bring your peace and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Father, we pray for ourselves. Thank you for this beautiful new day and for life and for evidence of your love all around us, for the wonder of creation, 
for bird song, for trees and plants bursting into bloom, for music, for phone conversations, for smiles from strangers, for the internet, for fresher, cleaner air, for gardens and parks, for friends, for hope, for your hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that where two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.